Hey guys, everything new under the sun. We're going to talk today about the Lemmy Power portable power station. Today I have it in uh, the camper here. It's been used uh, for three weeks straight basically by uh, family and uh, we're going to show it to you today. Here we are in the camper. We've got some uh, LED lights on, 120 volt. And we've got some outlets and uh, plugs wired up. And powering this whole camper is the Lemmy Power. Uh, used uh, by uh, a family and friends who have stayed in the camper for the last two weeks straight basically using this um, with uh, for 120 volts and also a DC charging of iPads and uh, cell phones and having tea and coffee so for uh, a running an RV a camper for uh, visiting visitors and uh, on your own vacations uh, this unit is uh, perfect and durable so what is Lemmy Power exactly? Well, it's a Kickstarter campaign to create a portable power station, uh, and uh, it is powered by uh, a life a PO4 a lithium iron phosphate battery, which is the top of uh, battery technology currently. It's a 51.2 volt battery, uh, also known as a 48 volt battery. Um, uh, the inverter is pure sine wave. It produces 1500 watts um, steady. A power out uh, output and it, it will surge to 3000 watts. Its capacity is 1536 watt hours. It has four AC outlets on the back and on the front you get your standard USB, USB-C, power delivery ports and quite a variety as well as the standard cigarette uh, adapter uh, or a socket uh, which allows for uh, 10 amps. The USB-C ports will power 30 watt, 60 watt or 100 watt devices depending on which port you use so you can uh, charge your MacBook laptops or any modern laptops. For inputs there are many. Um, it has a solar input uh, engine then just a regular DC input. The solar input is 15 volts to 58 volts at, at 10 amps. And then there's an XT60 connector input and uh, that's uh, 12 volts to 36 volts and they're all clearly labeled on the back of the unit and that uh, allows up to 10 amps as well. The solar is uh, the Anderson power pole connector. The nice thing about this is there is an MPPT uh, charge controller in there and you can actually have both these plugged in at the same time. Now that's the first thing I went to when I plugged in the solar panels. I tried them both at the same time and we'll discuss that uh, later. There are LEDs on the front and the back uh, which are handy for um, ambient lighting during the night or otherwise. Um, you know you look at a light on one of these units and you say I'm never going to use that but they do come in handy when camping. The power brick itself uh, there is no wall ward or power brick it's uh, built right into the unit which is really nice so all you get is a color cord, uh, a kettle cord to plug it in. Uh, it comes with various cables the two uh, uh, DC and the solar cable as well as the car charger cable to plug it in your car again to charge it at 10 amps and it comes with a, a nice little bag to carry all these things as well. Now the manual suggests an array of uh, 400 watts connected in series and parallel to match uh, the input specs of um, the four 18 volt 100 watt panels which is described uh, in the manual. First experience with the Lemmy Power and I'm comparing it to a Jackery 1500 because that's a, a power system that I've had uh, although there are much fewer options on the Jackery than the Lemmy Power. Um, so I, I have tried this with a, a number of different devices, all of which, again, I tested on the Jackery, including a kettle, a hair dryer, a microwave, lights, and devices, and a well pump. The only thing that I found that it did not run, that the Jackery will, uh, is uh, the well pump. Now, that because it, uh, is because the Jackery 1500 is an 1800-watt inverter surging to 3600-watt versus 1500-watts surging to 3000 on the Lemmy Power, so I can't really fault the Lemmy Power for that. Um, it's, it's specs out of the box um, aren't really intended to run a well pump, which is a massive inductive uh, load. So if that's what you're looking for, then you need to um, uh, look for something else potentially. The, the touch screen on it is uh, very easy to use, very easy to manage, control the device. You can see errors, you can set configuration options, you can set timeouts for the device. It's really handy to use. Uh, idle timeouts. Uh, you can uh, program it or set it up so that if it doesn't see any significant input or output power it will turn itself off. And this is a, a key thing uh, because uh, a couple of times we've left the AC on overnight on the unit you know while seeing zero watts output on the screen 
uh, come to find out it being dead in the morning and that's because the inverter itself and the screen of course take uh, power and a fair a significant amount of power uh, to where it drains the whole device even though it doesn't show any output on the screen because there's nothing actually plugged in and nothing uh, of significance certainly so if you're running like a four watt uh, LED light in the camper uh, that I was showing earlier um, then you may find in the morning that if you don't turn the, uh, the AC off it will drain now this is this might be something they tweak going forward and uh, provide some uh, details on this on the screen in terms of what the use uh, inverter usage is uh, as well now the Wi-Fi app for me I don't have an Android there is an Android app out for it uh, I, I have an iOS device and the iOS app isn't released as of yet um, but otherwise, uh, I think uh, you'll probably be able to configure all the same items as on the touchscreen of the device itself. And you really don't need uh, a phone or app for it unless you want to remotely manage it and turn on and off lights uh, via Wi-Fi. Solar input. Now, this was the interesting one for me. I'm all about solar renewable energy. I think it's fascinating to collect energy from the sun. And uh, here you can see some uh, clips of me testing it in various states. One was when we were camping and I took a, a single 100 watt solar panel and it was uh, pulling in about 52 watts. I think it uh, spiked up a little bit higher there, 80 watts or so, probably not in direct sunlight. But there's uh, two inputs there that you can use for solar, a DC and a solar. Uh, one is an XT60 connector and the other is an Anderson power pole. Now, what is good about this uh, is that, uh, yes, it works as expected. Yes, uh, MPPT uh, does work. Um, I was noticing a bit of oddity when plugging both uh, XT60 and the Anderson power pole in at the same time. The MPPT seemed to have, to have trouble. Um, it would switch to one and then switch that off and go to the other and, and go back in tween, between them. Um, but at some point, it did eventually settle down, and it, it was collecting all the power uh, from um, both panels. I had a total of 400 panels, uh, 400 watts, rather, uh, connected to it, but 200 on the XTC 60 connector and 200 watts on the uh, Anderson power pole connector. And it did eventually figure it out. It was just kind of clicking back and forth um, because it, the setup I had wasn't exactly as the documentation describes, which is... 400 watts with four panels in series and parallel on the solar input. So this is the example of the 400 watt panels that I have set up. Again, I'm putting 200 watts per uh, input there on 200 watts on the solar, 200 watts on the XT60 connector. These are just 18 volt 100 uh, watt panels. And, and this is what they describe in the manual as uh, all being connected through the, the single solar input, uh, but they have to be in uh, parallel and, and series configured correctly. So here is what I was seeing. This is kind of one half of uh, the panels, 194 watts, and it wasn't quite seeing all the panels there. Sorry for the uh, um, obscured display. It's hard to get uh, in the sunlight there. But now you see 304 watts. Now this is, the MPPT was kind of clicking back and forth, and eventually it did start accepting power from both of them at the same time. Although it did seem to have a little bit of trouble, but it, it did, uh, like I say, eventually settle down and start uh, charging off both of them. Um, another issue I had was that uh, when I was uh, boiling the kettle, which it was plugged in behind it, it would shut the whole thing down uh, as well, as if it, there wasn't pass-through energy. Um, but again, ultimately that did end up working when it when the MPPT charge controller figured itself out, it was able to charge and uh, also power the AC at the same time. So it did eventually work. Here's a quick little walk around of the Lemmy power unit. So it's got these handles on top. They're very, very tough, very sturdy. It comes with these little rubber inserts. Uh, I guess you can stack these. You can push these down and they, they do lock in place and then they pop back up. And I guess that's for storage or you can put stuff on top of them. But then if you don't want that and you want to use them, They've got these little rubber inserts that just kind of go there and they fit in and they prevent these from going down all the way and uh, that can that can uh, allow you to kind of put stuff on top of it without having them roll. This is the wireless uh, charge uh, top to the unit. On the sides it just has some, some grating, some air holes. Um, on the front, uh, which you've seen, we've got the touch screen and it's off right now. We've got the power delivery and USB ports and of course the socket adapter right there and some extra uh, barrel connectors for charging things and the LED lights. 
Um, you can see in the sun, it's hard to see this, the display, but this is not going to be an outdoor unit anyways. On the other side, they just have another grate. And then of course on the back you've got your four AC connectors, your on off button, and then all the inputs at the bottom there, which include your solar, your DC input, your car charger input, and uh, then the AC kettle cord uh, to go on the back. Now the bottom of the unit just has some rubber feet and uh, some Lemmy power, uh, a Lemmy power sticker and telling you some basic input output uh, uh, details about it and uh, some storage specifications. Now this unit is very heavy. You can lift it up with one hand, um, but it does take some effort. Um, and these are very sturdy to carry this unit, but it, but it is a very heavy uh, unit. All right, final thoughts on the Lemmy Power solar generator. The unit is uh, very strong, and uh, as uh, being in the solar generator category, it really does have the best battery that you can get um, and, uh, in, in, the, in terms of the uh, life, uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. It has so many inputs and outputs that there isn't a lot more you can really add to the unit. It's got pretty much everything you could ever ask for. It's very sturdy, strongly built. It is hefty, but it is very stur uh, sturdy. It has never felt like it was flimsy or uh, about to fall apart. And I move it back and forth from the house to the camper uh, several times uh, to charge it and to do uh, various things. And it's uh, very solid. The only issue that I had is the AC drain issue. If you leave the AC on overnight, it may drain the battery when it doesn't seem to have any output. Uh, but maybe that's something they're going to uh, resolve as they go forward and uh, kind of make it a little, a little bit more efficient when, when the inverter is uh, turned on. The fault tolerance is excellent. I plugged in the wrong voltage into, uh, I think it was the XT60 or the, or the Anderson power pole ports, my fault. Uh, and I put in more voltage than it was expecting. It, it didn't blow up. It didn't wreck the unit, thankfully. Um, but uh, uh, an error did, an error message uh, popped up on screen and warn me about it and shut the unit down. So you just have to reset it and then check your power uh, and uh, proceed. So the fault tolerance is excellent with this, even for dummies like me uh, plugging in uh, the wrong amount of uh, voltage there. Um, if you want to get one of these, you can go head over to the Kickstarter page. It launched August 31st. Uh, you'll find links in the description for the Kickstarter page and the main, main Lemmy Power page. And uh, so uh, thanks to Lemmy Power for sending it out to me to have a look at. I would suggest the best use case for this particular one is emergency power in your house or uh, in this case what I was using it for uh, when uh, family and friends were over for a vacation. Um, I put it in the camper and it powered the whole camper from AC lights to uh, DC phone charging, iPad charging, laptop charging, uh, etc. And it's great for that. And in a camper you don't have a lot of room for solar panels anyways so a modest 400 watts on a camper roof uh, would be a perfect combination with this to charge it and provide all your power needs in your camper uh, you know for boondocking you're not going to have a two kilowatt uh, solar array on the roof of a camper so this is a perfect smaller size uh, for that sort of uh, setup so definitely if you're looking uh, for one of these generators if you're in the market check this one out uh, it has pretty much every feature you could ever ever have and probably the most important feature is that it has a lithium iron phosphate battery which uh, you know has uh, thousands of cycles available on it so it will probably uh, last 10 or 15 years probably more than that uh, based on the amount of time um, that, that you or I uh, would cycle this sort of unit in its class, in its category. Uh, it's not to be part of a main solar array on your house to be uh, cycled every single day. So the, the use case for it is that, you know, it probably lasts as, as long as you uh, would have it, 10, 10, 15 years. So thanks for watching. Uh, let me know if you like this, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Quick update, the Kickstarter page is now live. Uh, it is August 31st as of uh, this video. And um, there are backers already, so hop on quick if you want to. The link will be in the description to the, the Kickstarter page. Now what you can do, uh, typical with Kickstarter, is if you join early, you get a significant discount from the original price. So if you, the first one is a US pledge of $12.99 and you get the basic unit with a 12 month warranty. 
you can step up here to uh, pledging US 1849 and you will get two 100 watt solar panels along with it. And you can step up even further to uh, four panels for $22.99. So you get a whole kit, a whole solar kit, emergency kit if you want um, with this particular unit. So uh, not too bad. Take a look at it. Um, it depends on what exactly you need. If you need a small little unit with a couple of solar panels just for some off-grid emergency power when needed, you can do that. And, uh, and they show images there of you know running a, a battery power chainsaws and emergency uh, off-grid situations uh, and of course the safety of the uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, battery so I would uh, definitely suggest go and read this there's lots of great infographics which I tell you about the batteries and the safety certifications and the number of cycles 5,000 cycles uh, they're claiming uh, which you know is about a, a 10 years use um, and it will probably last much longer than that. that's only down to 80 percent capacity uh, generally speaking so a lot of interesting stuff on the kickstarter page so uh, definitely check it out and uh, if you want to back it definitely go ahead it's a significant discount to back it early uh, um, rather than paying full price uh, retail once they actually uh, officially launch it and the estimated delivery date is november 2022 so uh, folks let me know if you if you uh, like it and we'll see you guys in the next video